all you beautiful YouTubers. My name is John and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can introduce feature flagging into your organization. Now you might be thinking, feature flags, big deal. All I need to do is bang in an F statement into my code, put a config setting somewhere, job done. Well, this is kind of true. However, it's pretty limiting. Now imagine you work in an organization and you have a mobile application and a website and you want to do some feature flagging on a feature that should be toggled between both of them at the same time. How are you gonna manage that? Are you gonna have two different code bases, two different settings, multiple releases? Imagine if you work in an organization where you have multiple websites. So you might have a legacy website written in C-sharp and a new modern website written in React. Trying to manage the same feature flag between those two different code bases is gonna be a pain in the bottom. And again, if you work in an organization where you just have multiple projects with multiple teams, not having a central place to manage all your feature flags could be a pain. So this is why in this video, I'm gonna talk about Optimizely rollouts. Now, Optimizely rollouts is completely free. Anyone can sign up and start adding feature flagging into their organization. So the really cool thing about Optimizely rollouts is they provide SDKs for pretty much every single major, lang major programming language. So you have PHP, C Sharp, React, Node, Go, Python. So you're gonna have a central portal to manage all your feature flags. You can have all these SDKs so you can easily get access to your feature flags and code. Sounds brilliant. Now, as a disclaimer, I should say that I have recently started working at Optimizely. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend anything on this channel that I don't personally think is really good. So this is something I do recommend that you should check out and I personally used it in one of my projects. So I give it a thumbs up. Again, it's free so you can give it a try, see what you think. Also, this is the YouTubes and I'd be amiss if I didn't say smash that subscribe button. My name is John and I do weekly YouTube videos on things like CMS, developer productivity, potentially a little bit of experimentation. So if you haven't already, hit subscribe because it's very easy to lose content on the YouTubes. So assuming that you've done that, let's get a look at how we can start introducing this Optimizely rollouts into our code. Getting access to Optimizely rollouts will take you all of 30 seconds. In a browser, simply go to optimizely.com slash free dash feature dash flagging. Just type in Optimizely rollouts. You'll find this page, scroll halfway down the bottom. And as you can see, you're gonna get access to this sign up for free feature flagging form. Fill in your details, sell your soul to the devil by clicking on the TNCs, and then you'll get access to the rollouts portal. One of the really nice thing about rollouts is it's not just feature flagging alone. It's also web experimentation. So you can run some A-B tests on your new features. So this is really cool because it's gonna allow you to actually test and prove that when you're releasing a new feature, if it actually converts and if you should actually add it to your site. So this is actually gonna help you figure out how well your site is actually doing. Now, rollouts is a freemium pricing model. So this means that for your free pricing tier, you're gonna get unlimited feature flags, add as many as you want, and you can run one A-B test at a time. Now, if you want to run multiple server-side A-B tests, or you want to run multiple experiments on your feature flags at the same time, you are gonna to have to upgrade to the Optimizely full stack account. I won't cover that here. This video is just focused on all the free stuff. Now, after you create a rollouts account, you're gonna be logged into this beautiful Optimizely portal. So all the Optimizely products, they all look very similar. I really like the interface. I think it's quite clean, minimal, really easy to get up and up to speed with. So as you can see in the portal here, we have this settings tab. So for this video, what we're gonna do is create a Next.js application and we're gonna hook it up into this portal and then run a feature flag. So I'm gonna show you everything you need. Now, obviously to get our application, and the portal talking together, we're gonna to need some sort of authentication. And this is where the settings tab comes into play. So clicking on settings, you can see that we have this environments. Now out of the box, rollouts come with a production and a development environment, each having its own special key. Now you're free to create as many different environments as you want. Simple as just clicking this add environment, add in a name, it's gonna give you a key. So what we're gonna do now is copy our key, then download a SDK for React and create our next application. 
and then we're going to have the two talking together. I'm not going to walk you through how to create the Next.js application here because I've already done a video on that. So check out my Jamstack series if you need a helping guide. Basically, you just need to do an NXP space create dash next dash app at latest and then follow the instructions. Now, I've already got my application installed. So the next thing we need to do is install our Optimizely React SDK. So we just need to do an npm install dash dash save at optimizely slash react dash sdk and then that's going to fire off install our package now all we need to do is add our feature flag code into our application the code to integrate our next.js application with rollout is dead simple i'll quickly walk you through everything you need to do so as most react things we need to do some imports so the first thing we need to import is something called create instance. And this is going to allow us to create our rollout setting. So this is where we're going to define our authentication key. Next, we're going to define a component called optimizely feature. And this is the component which is allow us to wrap in our feature flag. And lastly, we need something called optimizely provider. And this is the thing which is going to establish connection back to rollout. And then obviously we need to import this. And this is going to come from optimizely slash react SDK. Now our next step is to create our config object. So let's call this optimizely config. There we go. And this is going to use the create instance method. And we're simply going to paste in our SDK key that we copied from the portal. So remember, I'm using my development key here. Now, all we need to do is go into our component and into the actual JSX and return some stuffs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish a connection to a rollout by doing this optimizely provider. And then we're going to define our config option. So optimizely config. And then we can also define a user. So this is going to allow us to identify which users are using which features within the portal. Now, if you're doing this in a proper application, I will probably use the actual user ID. However, for this dummy example, let's just call this example ID. Now, to actually get to our feature flags, we can use the optimizely feature component. And then in here, we're going to pass in the name of our feature flag. So this is going to be my flag. Now, we'll create this in a little bit. Now, the thing about my flag is it is case sensitive. So make sure that you have the right stuff in there. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Now, when we're using the optimized feature component, we're going to get two props, one called enabled and another one called variables. So what we can actually do is define some variables within the portal and pass these values down. So imagine you wanted to apply a discount. You could dynamically pass down some discount into the feature, or you might just want to pass in some text, whatever it is, you can pass variables and it can be done in the portal rather at compile time. So let's just do a quick flag or ternary expression. So let's do enabled. Let's use a react fragment and let's have enabled and render out our variable. So let's create a variable in a minute called test variable close off our fragment and then the end part let's just have disabled and that is pretty much all the code that you need in order to do a feature flag so let's quickly close off our tag so optimizely feature and there's still an issue oh there we go so close off our optimizely feature and then we just need to close off our optimizely provider and that is all the code we need to set up a feature flag within our code. It's time to create our feature flags within the Optimizely portal. So to do this, we need to go to the flag screen, which is available from the menu. Now to create a new flag, simply click on the new create flag button. This will launch a modal. So give your flag a name. So let's call it my feature flag. Now the key is super important, as I mentioned before. So this has to match case sensitive, otherwise things aren't gonna hook up. Now just click on the create flag button. Now, as you can see, we've got our different environments. So we can enable our feature flag on and off in the different environments. 
So remember we use the development key. So in the top screen here, you can see that we can simply just enable our flag. Now, if we really want to, we can decide how we release this feature to our different users. And this is one of the really cool things about this tool. So you can see we've got this add rule button. Now what we can do is release this feature in a targeted delivery. So if you're a big fan of Canary releases or dark launches, whatever terminology you want to use, you can pick what level of the um, audience will see your feature. So if you just wanted to do a bit of a dark launch and maybe you only want to get 10%, 20% of your audience actually looking at your feature, you might be able to then test it in isolation, just making sure that the whole thing doesn't break for everyone in the world. Now, the other type of, if we cancel out this, revert. So the other type of rule we can do is obviously we can do some A-B testing. We're in Optimizely, they love experiments and testing things. So you can actually start doing some experiments and making sure that the people who use your feature actually convert and actually do something that you expect them to do. So again, this is just a little bit more than feature flagging. However, I won't cover that here. Now, the other thing that we set up in our video earlier on was the variable. So we can pass any information we want from the portal into our feature. So clicking on default variables, you can create any type of variable you want so a Boolean, string, integer, some JSON. So remember in the example previously, we had a test variable and the default value, let's call it John Rocks. Oh yeah, because I do. Now you can't see this because my big head is in the way. However, if I just move over a little, you can see that when I'm creating a variable, I'll also get access to a little snippet of code. So I can actually paste in all this code directly into my React. Now, if I tab along, you can see that I've got access to the Android, the C Sharp, all that sort of good stuff. So if you really want to know how to implement some of these variables in your code, come along, do a bit of copy and paste, job is a good un. So what I need to do now is click save to add my variable. And that is it. I've got my feature flag enabled, it's defined. Now all we need to do is run the application and see what happens. So the final thing that we need to do is a quick npm run dev. This should launch our website. And then now if we go back to our site, we should see that our feature flag is enabled and the value of our variable is being passed through. That is everything that you need to know about in order to get up and running using feature flags, using Optimizely rollouts. So as I said, this is a free tool. You can have unlimited feature flags and you can even do that one free A-B test at the same time. So you've got nothing to lose. If you like the idea of feature flags and if you read a book like the Phoenix Project or the DevOps Handbook, feature flagging is the way that they recommend you release software. So if you're on board, give this tool a go because it's probably the best one that I've found for feature flagging alone. So what do you think? Are you impressed with this tool? Do you think feature flagging is something that you could use in your organization? Please leave a comment below. As always, I'm really interested to hear what your thoughts are. If you've got any ideas or you want to see something extra, please let me know because I can record another video. Simple, easy, done. Now, it's also got to that stage of the video where I need to plug my own stuffs. Now, hit that subscribe button if you want to be an absolute legend. You don't want to lose this beautiful face. Otherwise, if you haven't, I recommend that you subscribe to my newsletter. Every Sunday, I send out some just news about what content I've written, some industry standard stuff that's happened that week, some interesting programming articles. So subscribe, it's free, you won't get spam, you've got nothing to lose. Also, if you want to do me a solid because you like this video and you like my face, please hit that like button and help me trick the YouTube algorithm gods into sharing my videos to more peoples, because I would very much appreciate that. Otherwise, I hope you found a load of value from this video. Hope you're having an amazing time wherever you are in the world and happy coding.